graduate management admissions test. And basically, it's very similar um, to the GRA. There's a quantitative part, and there's a verbal part, and there's an essay part. There often is an additional part that gets added to the um, math integrated reasoning. And you didn't hear me mention admissions standard of that, because it's fairly new, and the numbers are in flux, and we didn't really feel comfortable going through um, the curriculum process of creating an admissions standard for that, when that really hasn't, um, it hasn't leveled out yet to be, to the, so most schools do not have um, a level per se on that. That does not mean, however, that you should just skip that part. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you that because students do that. It is a terrible, terrible idea. Um, so even though we do not have an uh, admission standard on that, we have an expectation that you will complete that part to the best of your ability. You should still look at um, that section and you should still prepare for that section um, and do your best on that. One, because if you just blow it off, I'm looking at you and thinking, this person's not a good candidate for my program. He's not taking the test that to, to, to get admitted seriously. Second of all, you don't know right now what you want to do later. You might think, I don't want a PhD, but you might at the end of this. We always have somebody at the end of our program who didn't start off wanting a PhD, who wants a PhD. And what happens then when you have to submit GMAT scores and get a zero on that part, and they do care about the integrated reason. And even if you have to take the GMAT again, because that score is not hard, high enough, or you want it to be higher to get into a better school, they are going to look at that first GMAT and say, no, we're not taking this person. So you take the whole test seriously. Um, but all, if you go to MBA.com, this is where you'll create a profile. Um, to, this is where you sign up for the test. You should go ahead and create a profile now if you're interested in it, because it has a lot of resources that you can explore as, as, a, as a member um, on it. And one of the best things that, that they have about that is some free GMAT prep software. So you can download it for free. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about a prep class we're, we're having here starting March 16th. But if you don't have time for that, um, to do that, and you already have a GMAT plan, and you wanted to kind of see where you stand out, this is a great way to download some software. There's some study guides. It gives you some structure on the test. And you can take two uh, full length exams. Do not go into the GMAT blind. Let me tell you, the questions on this test are questions you've never seen. Now the verbal ones, oh, reading the passage and getting the gist of it, what's the main topic you've all done? Grammar, you guys might need some help on, but you've probably done it. Even critical reasoning, um, looking at the logic of an argument, um, you might, some of you may have done, but you need some help on. But what you guys have never done are data sufficiency questions. And this is the questions that are going to kill. So do not jump into that quantitative part saying, hey, I'm an ace in math, I can do this. No. These questions are what questions you've never seen before. So don't go into the test blind. One, because your first test, even if we'll take your highest test, is still a reflection on you um, later down the road. Um, two, why would you spend $250 on a test that you're not going to prepare for? That's crazy. That's throwing money out the door. That's already telling me you're not ready to be an student. You've got a budget. So 